Hey everyone, yesterday was of course the big SOPA blackout protest. Sites like Reddit and Boing Boing participated in addition to uh, Wikipedia and even Google had a notice on their homepage and an online petition which received about 4.5 million signatures. Uh, the Wikipedia blackout page was seen by more than 162 million uh, users. So now this is really, really mainstream. People know about it. They're talking about it. Uh, even the zombies on Facebook, when you log into your Facebook feed, people are like, oh my god, what is this SOPA thing? OMG, dislike. Uh, so it's out there now. And it was funny in a sad way yesterday to see the mainstream media try to cover their rear ends. You know, you saw anchors on CNN and the other networks, like, apparently there's this thing out there called SOPA that some websites are upset about. They're upset about this piracy bill. Uh, the reason why they're not covering it properly and the reason why they waited until yesterday to cover it, first of all, their hand was forced. When, you know, 80% of the internet now knows about this legislation, you can't continue to ignore it or you lose all credibility, which they're close to losing anyway. Second of all, uh, they haven't been covering it in the weeks leading up to this. There's certainly been a lot of discussion about SOPA and about the Protect IP Act. These are things that should have been discussed for weeks and should have been uh, brought into the public eye. And the reason why they didn't is because the three, the handful of biggest news networks in this country have parent companies that are very much in support of SOPA. Uh, CNN is owned by Time Warner, which makes a lot of its money from New Line Cinema and Warner Brothers. Fox News is owned by News Corporation, which makes a lot of its money from the Fox TV and movie studios. And their chief, uh, Rupert Murdoch, even tweeted yesterday that uh, congressmen were being, quote, terrorized by, uh, by the result of this blackout and by all of the interest that it created. I'm not sure when freedom of speech and when calling your elected representatives became uh, terrorism, but that's, you know, that's his own opinion. He said, let me bring up the exact quote here. Seems blogosphere, how do you say that anyways? I, don't, I never use that word in discussion. Seems blogosphere has succeeded in terrorizing many senators and congressmen who previously committed. Politicians all the same. So he seems to be likening uh, protest and sending letters to your congressman uh, with terrorism. A very V for Vendetta move. Is this guy, I mean, it'd be one thing if this was just some guy on the internet. But this is one of the most powerful media executives in the world. You know, he decides uh, the narrative to a large extent. So that's, that's really troubling. Um, aside from SOPA and Protect IP Act, I was on Coast to Coast AM last night, uh, hosted by George Norrie. I was on for about half hour. And the whole segment, they did this multi-hour special on the NDAA that everyone needs to check out. I posted a link to it on my Google Plus page so you can listen to the audio clip. Uh, just extraordinary coverage. He had Alex Jones on in the hour after me. Uh, he had just so many good guests on. And unlike some other shows where they're like, oh, this NDAA thing isn't that big a deal, everyone on this show realized it was a big deal. So we were able to get in-depth and really discuss what's going on here. Uh, Coast to Coast AM is, it airs on more than 500 radio stations in the U.S., Canada, and Guam. And it has like four and a half million listeners. So now a lot of people know about NDAA. And they're going to start telling their friends and family about it. That's huge. Uh, the final thing I want to leave you guys with is when you see all those people on Facebook talking about SOPA and they're outraged because they don't want their favorite websites to go away, you should politely swoop in and say, yeah, SOPA is a huge deal, but you also need to Google NDAA because it was actually signed into law 19 days ago and has received very little media attention, and it needs to be immediately amended. Actually, uh, Representative Ron Paul has already presented legislation which would uh, amend the indefinite detention provisions and get rid of those. Uh, everyone in the House needs to support that. This is like a no-brainer. And even when they do fix this problem, they still need to be recalled. I think we need a one-time special recall of those in the Senate and the House who supported this treasonous legislation. Uh, you know, attempted murder is still a crime. You know, they tried to snuff out our rights, 
and they actually got away with it. We're living in a state right now where we don't really have due process. So chances are the outrage is going to grow to the point where they will support something like Ron Paul's bill and amend this, but the damage has already been done. I can no longer trust anyone who supported this, and they need to be recalled, similar to in other countries where you have a vote of no confidence and you just throw out those who are no longer representing uh, the American people's interests. I think we need to do that. I'm not going to organize it. I'm just here to report what's going on. There are already big petitions out there. On Facebook, there's one called One Billion Against Indefinite Detention. Uh, they're trying to get a billion people to uh, sign on board. That's pretty hard, considering I don't think Facebook even has a billion users. Uh, but it's definitely a lofty goal. And there are other petitions out there on change.org. There are petitions to impeach President Obama and recall the senators and congressmen who supported NDAA's indefinite detention provisions. Uh, anyway, look up this stuff. Uh, keep uh, sending me tweets with your news tips and articles and stuff, because this is where I get a vast majority of my information comes from reader tips. And I said that last night on Coast to Coast AM. Uh, I found out about NDAA through a reader tip. So uh, it's a two-way dialogue. This isn't really a newscast. It's more of a discussion. Uh, I appreciate everyone who watches and everyone who is a part of it.